Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Lauren, uh, joining us from Mexico today. Um, Lauren on Earth. Uh, today is 23rd of January 2024 when we record this. Um, you have this beautiful background, beautiful space behind you. Are you always based in Mexico or is there more to your lifestyle? I it's so great to be here and yes I I've been living on and off in Mexico for the past four years right around the time of the pandemic as much as I would love to stay in one place with that cancer moon placement I am on the go and I've been traveling pretty frequently since I was 23, but the past four years, there's been a lot of movement and kind of looks like I'm living in all of these different sacred sites, vortexes. There's obviously Tulum here in Mexico. I spend a lot of time in Mount Shasta, California and Glastonbury, England, and I'm kind of between those three, but then home technically is Denver, Colorado which is maybe a little not not what you were expecting, but the mountains always call me back. I just don't get to spend as much time there as I would like. So many amazing choices and what a way to spend COVID. <laughs> really nice manifestation. But I, I wonder if, you know, what was it like for you during that time with everything that was going on in the world and you being on a sacred site where energies are potent? Was it transformational for you too, maybe even more so. It almost feels like you are called to work with energy grids in certain places. And I wonder if Uranus and Neptune in your first house, kind of near the ascendant, does that have anything to do with that, where you kind of change rapidly and Neptune there calling in the higher intuition to help you navigate where you move next? Makes sense. I definitely work with the grid. I finally, I would say over the past two years, really started to understand what that means. I, I clear a lot of distortion in the grid. I know we wanted to talk about that too, but yeah, here in Tulum, it's, I mean, the energy is so potent and powerful and yes, the veil is thinner. There's a lot of underworld connections here. And the beauty of this place is that she, and she as in Tulum, does not let you forget that your shadow exists. So there's always opportunity for growth, even when you don't really want it, which I think is why I was called at the time where it almost forced me to face what I needed to face. And it actually was the beginning of my descent into the underworld for my own journey for my soul's evolution. And yeah, it was the start of it for me. And I am out of it now, but I'm back here to experience Tulum finally in a little bit different of a light. I know that this this year I'm spending six months here, which is uh, normally it's around four this time at six. And I have big mission work here to clear some of the black magic that is currently being used by a lot of practitioners here. There's also a parallel to Atlantis. Sometimes I'm like, am I living in Atlantis or modern day Tulum? So yeah, it's very interesting. And um, I'll be traveling to Egypt as well. And both of those places are connected. So I know there's a lot coming for me this year in terms of the grid work. It feels so good to know that we have precious gems like you placed in key locations to do this work because I, I am aware how much of that shadow is, is really there present and uh, stretching its hands on people who are just opening up to worldly energies and developing their psychic abilities and intuitive abilities, just so vulnerable to anything and everything that can come from the other side. So thank you so much for your service. And what an amazing manifestation yet again of your natal Pluto in Scorpio in the 11th house, kind of serving the collective and the higher hopes, um, Scorpio, the, the underworld, and also having your Chiron in the eighth house, everything that's hidden, the shadow, the dark magic, Mars in the eighth house and moon in the eighth house. Like, I mean, you're totally exactly where you're meant to be. So thanks again for that. I would love to actually start with your um, kind of journey from the beginning. But while we already touched on this topic, let's continue just a little longer 
on this. And I would really like to ask your perspective on how to manifest an experience in these powerful energetical sites like Tulum or Egypt, while you have the awareness of both the most amazing light and connection to amazing Akashic library and activations for your own uh, ascension, ascension, but also being very or hyper aware of all the predators in uh, other realms and in this physical reality too, how to navigate that space in a in an enjoyable and safe way? Would you say is it the the rituals that we can physically do to keep the place sacred and having a very powerful intention? Or is there anything else that that you recommend? I, and it's a big topic. We could probably do a whole podcast on that. Can you like make it short? Um, yeah, I mean, the psychic protection, like having those practices and tools, kind of like what you mentioned with the ritual work, as long as it's done from a place of pure intention, um, is necessary. At the same time, the inner work is almost even more important because your layer of protection is only as strong as what's within. So like, yes, there are forces on this planet that are trying to stop us from reconnecting back to our hearts and to our truth. And, but at the same time, they've been, they've been here for all of these lifetimes that we've already lived where the veil was even thicker. So yes, we want to protect ourselves as we continue to expand in this lifetime, the remembrance of our gifts, but also we have to unpack everything that has already happened, the history that we have with these groups and this energy. So your call to these places when you're ready and regardless of if you're meant to have a beautiful and light and happy-go-lucky experience or if it is meant to be challenging and meant to teach you a lot and break you down a little bit, both are beautiful ways to experience these portals and it really depends on what you need. Like if I had gone to Egypt five years ago when I was still battling this darkness, my trip probably would have looked a lot different than what it's going to look like, you know, now that I have my immunity and I'm completely protected. Long story short, have your tools for protection, continue to advance them. Like as you continue to grow and advance your abilities, you also need to advance the protection abilities as well, because what might have worked once where there were more veils that were keeping you from seeing truth in that way might not continue to work as those veils collapse. Something that I do teach from like foundation uh, practices for protection to advanced galactic technology, and then also working on, okay, what uh, energies are already there, what's already in the blueprint that is allowing these entities in that we need to dismantle and neutralize and restore so that even if they're near you and around you, you're not affected at all. Amazing. And I'm so glad I can refer people to perhaps your Instagram and your website as well. But your Instagram has almost 18,000 followers um, as we are recording this now. So Lauren on Earth on Instagram uh, or also on your website where people can um, go through uh, various services that you can offer in case they find themselves in a vulnerable place and or just being precautious and looking for guidance. I, I will say to you, like, if you are experiencing an attack or an unwanted energy in your field to take action and not wait or allow it to continue to um, take up space. And I also, it's new, it's a baby, but I just started a podcast in the hopes that I can get this information out because if you do already follow me on Instagram, sometimes I'll post like 10 slides worth of typing and it's just yeah it's just an easier way for me to teach this without you know having to drop into session so that is also available on my website it's called beyond the veil how beautiful with your son in gemini in sixth house house of kind of daily task and service and also your ascendant in sagittarius um your south node in gemini north north node in sagittarius between 12 and 6 houses so again just such a perfect manifestation and beautiful alignment so thank you for all that and that and best of luck with the uh, new project with the new podcast. So Lauren, let's go to the beginning in terms of where you started awakening to the other realms and becoming aware 
of your intuition um, becoming stronger and stronger, where would you like to start? Technically, it was childhood, I think, probably for many of us. I was very clairsentient and claircognizant. So I felt everything and I knew things without being able to explain how. I, I didn't make the connection that these were abilities until I was about 24 years old. So I grew up outside of New York City. It was just never a topic you know, the the rat race, you know, you get kind of caught in that even at a young age of this is how life is. So I moved to California after uh, getting chronically like a mystery chronic illness. I know now it was negative thoughts and self-abuse and just the breaking down of the body over time, but definitely eye-opening and a little scary. And so that is really when I started to hear the voices, or I guess that you would say the Claire audience start to turn on and I would hear this voice that I knew wasn't my own thought, but it sounded like me that was basically saying, don't listen to these doctors who are saying, you know, you're going to live like this. There's nothing we can do um, to guiding me to heal. That led me out to California. And then I started to realize, oh, I think I might be psychic. It took so long. It was such a long process. But again, back in 2013, 2014, I had time. This wasn't trendy. It wasn't popular. There weren't that many people that were on this path. So um, I know now there's been this mass awakening and we're all, you know, looking, um, but I wasn't really interested in that. I was just trying to heal myself and make sense of what was happening to me. Um, and then I wound up sitting with ayahuasca in Peru and I was like, please, I need a mentor. I don't know what's happening to me. And I was shown the face of a teacher that was a meditation teacher and yeah, two days later, she announced a foundational intuitive training course. So I signed up for that. And then for two years, I was dedicated to that path. And I had taken three courses for psychic development and three Akashic Record courses. Um, again, like no intention of being of service. But I couldn't stop. And then eventually at the start of COVID, I was just getting the message. It's time to start doing readings for others. And there was a lot of resistance, um, a lot of, you know, just wanting to be a regular, normal person. And now it's so, so far from that. So a lot of inner internal battle battling that I had to do, but I came out of the spiritual closet. No one really knew I was studying what I was studying and then I started to offer free readings and it it really just took off from, from there. And I was already certified in Reiki and energy healing, but I would say about six months into offering the readings and healings is when I started to really deep dive into the shadow and uh, started to expand my gifts there. And then it you know, from my own experiences of my descent to the underworld, that's where I learned most of what I know now and what I guide others through. So yeah, that's the the gist of it. I love that. I am wondering if you ever looked at the transits of that really deep, dark transformational period and where was Pluto? Because if your Pluto is in the 11th house when you were born, um, I wonder could have gone like maybe to your first or second house or really transforming the self and the values and and all that. And also when you you kind of received diagnosis at a certain location, which you didn't normally um, reside in, where it kind of became triggered. So I would be so curious to look at the astrocartography to see what astrological line, what planetary influence was in that particular location, because I'm sure it'll somehow tie into to the whole story and perhaps reveal even more about maybe some karmic clearings or whatever it may have been, but such a gift um, or blessing in disguise, right? All these powerful, powerful times we go through. I wonder where or when did you come across galactic astrology? How did that um, maybe expanded your work or what called you in you share your experience with seeing your own chart and seeing all those amazing alignments there? So in 2018, when I was taking those classes, one of my teachers was really connected to the Pleiadians. I always knew there was life, but I didn't 
have the resources. I didn't really dive any deeper. And I remember in one of the classes I was, um, yeah, I was not in the best place at that time, just like very lost and very confused and feeling different. And now with even, I, I feel like I'm a little bit of an outlier as well it, within the spiritual community, just with the type of work that I do. So even looking back, it makes sense why I felt just this yeah, ache for something that I didn't understand. And I remember asking her what star system I came from because I don't feel connected to earth. And she basically said, I don't have one and that I'm from everywhere. And that actually made me want to cry because I was like, great, I have no home here. I have no home there. Like I just have no home and that's just great. And I remember that's just how I perceived it. But the Pleiadians were coming into almost every session. So I began connecting with them separately on my own. And they were helping me to understand these systems and, you know, just the, the, the nicer understanding of what's really going on on this planet. So fast forward to when I started giving readings, I started to do these written readings that I called soul journey readings, which basically I open your records and I'm kind of shown the journey that the soul has taken through its many lifetimes. Didn't know galactic astrology existed, but I feel like I was doing it without the chart, more so just the information through the records. And they were short reports, maybe three pages. And i I met this woman actually in Mount Shasta who was doing some womb work on me and she was talking about how she's clearing some karma right now from her days on Lyra and connection to Andromeda and I was like how do you know all that because it was so detailed and she told me about galactic astrology and you and I went home and I signed up mm -hmm. and yeah the rest is history and I was like wow I this I can't believe this exists like this really complements what I had already been doing. So now I don't do those soul journey readings anymore. It's just the galactic astrology and the reports are very long. They're like 15 pages. I can't stop. I can't make them any shorter. So yes, yeah, so much information comes through. It's nice. Beautiful. They feel flawless. Like it's just like you can see how it, you just, there's no pause. It was just in one channeling or download that it came through really beautifully eloquently expressed the, the journey and many puzzle pieces but looking at your chart i i'm so glad to hear what you're saying because your moon is sextile pleiades in the eighth house and i've said it many times that when we have sextile to a star system beings from that star system often man come through as our guides, spiritual guides or helpers during really important key moments in our life, whether coming through the non-physical uh, realm or as human beings that have very strong Pleiadian connection. So I think that's just such a, such a beautiful validation of that. So you don't necessarily have Pleiadian conjunctions or any other alignments, but that sextile moon to Pleiades is really important part of your experience um you know shown as a spiritual guidance coming through the pleiades and then seeing many conjunct alignments to multiple star systems all the way from the outer planets to the ascendant like everything has really powerful conjunct tight alignments i believe you are like that like nomad uh, here on earth you are a nomad uh, in in cosmos, like galactic nomad, we could call you, because you have home in many places. You would have stopped in many places. So I love that your South North Node is conjunct Aldebaran and conjunct Antares. So your North Node in Sagittarius in 12th house, conjunct Antares, South Node conjunct Aldebaran. So the two royal stars that are often seen as um, uh, stargates, but they manifest us as stargates that help others to access um, higher parts of their being, uh, access soul records, and really act as an activator for others to remember where they came from. So that's, again, so beautiful that you do this work. Um, your ascendant in Sagittarius is conjunct of Hucius constellation star Razel Haug. Uh, how would you pronounce that? And uh, that is such a wise spiritual guiding star where you can channel um, higher wisdom to support others. You have connections to Hades. Actually, your son in Gemini, I was smiling at your Hades connection. So in sixth house, you have 
like you have a taste for beautiful expression, almost artistic way, how you portray yourself professionally through your Instagram. If I review that, if you look at your beautiful website, again, laurenonearth.com, I see beauty, uh, very gracefully expressed feminine. If we look at your basic astrology, I would look at Venus is Venus your Venus is in Aries in fourth house and there is not much like I wouldn't see in basic astrology uh, a clue that you have this knack for for beauty and art yet in galactic astrology your sun is conjac Hades the brightest star and we've seen this many times in this podcast there is always expression through art um, and just this beautiful way of showing up in the world so I thought that was so nice and then of course you have Corvus uh, constellation conjunct star algorab on your midheaven in libra so that's the dark side of spirituality like not being afraid of the shadow not being afraid of the darkness actually dealing with it in uh, in your public service i mean amazing like everything that i look at in terms of galactic alignments and your placements of planets uh, in the houses is like oh my god you're exactly where you're meant to be like so so wonderful to see that and I'm excited for your journey ahead uh, it looks like you're only getting started and uh, I hope you'll be able to reach many many more people because something uh, you know the niche that you're kind of developing through your own experience is so so needed at this time there's so much discernment that needs to be taught and educated especially to, to the younger generations that are coming in that are so vulnerable to massive exposure of all kinds of light beings that have a lot of thickness around them in terms of dark energies and manipulative tactics and all that so i'm really glad that you're guided here and that i can uh, introduce you to to this audience in terms of your galactic astrology sessions, so you said you offer written reports. Um, do you think going forward at some point you will have one-on-one -on -one Zoom video calls or does your lifestyle needs suit better to have the written reports that you can do in your own time? What do you see the future of your galactic astrology sessions? I do feel like I probably will offer the one-on-one -on -one video calls. I also would by request right now too. Okay. I do like doing the written reports for certain things because I I feel like it it just flows and there are more details that sometimes come through the writing than they do um, other ways. So yeah, there probably will be an option for both. Right now, I, I do like being able to kind of at the beach or in a beautiful place, just open the laptop and just start to, to channel and give myself a little bit of freedom. I do most, I mean, I would probably say 99% of the work is done via Zoom when I'm in session or doing readings. So I'm just reviewing um, your website and your Instagram. Would it be okay if we take a quick peek through this uh, video recording so we can share with our audience? So laurenonearth.com is the website name. This is the home page, and um, you have various tabs that you can explore. But in terms of the services, so you have the Akashic Records, Galactic Astrology, Written Readings, Healing, Quantum Healing, and Psychic Surgery so good and then mentorship cosmic academy the light process so would you like to take us through these in terms of yeah the quantum healing psychic surgery what would be the type of client that would come to you where it's obvious that this is something that they need what would be some of the symptoms that they have would you like to share that yeah the the main difference between the healing and the psychic surgery is in the healing we're more so working through behavioral patterns trauma beliefs emotion and just really helping to you know there's any energy being siphoned or anything stuck or not flowing or moving properly but we can go really deep in the quantum healing versus the psychic surgery that is where we're dealing with much uh an, a more external dark energy like a psychic attack or you know a, an entity that has attached or different forms of ai or black magic Magic. Also being able to spot like what the frequency of a psychic attack feels like and when you know that there's something there that is actively trying to stop you not only from ascension and from connecting with your higher self but also just from being able to live your life 
in the way that you deserve to. So, you know, sometimes there's, they, they make it so you're just not able to really feel happiness or create the life that you're desiring. And so, yeah, normally with the psychic surgeries, sometimes one session is enough. And most of the time it's much deeper, right? It's like we go on this journey together where this entity that has maybe attached or this attack was actually serving you because it's showing you, hey, there's still areas where you are allowing this to come in and we need to understand where that's coming from and and resolve that. So next time there won't be an ability for it to attach. So a lot of times it can be, it can be heavy. It can be hard to go through these things, but what I don't think these dark forces realize or maybe care to realize is that every time they come in and they show themselves, they're leading us just closer to sovereignty, which is what we're all here to, to work on. So I thank them for that. And with, you know, everything that has happened with me and I'm sure there will be another episode for my journey. And I think I'll also be sharing it as well on my own podcast. I do, I did update um, on Instagram. If you do want to go back and kind of read a little bit about what happened to me as I descended and, you know, these um, teachers who wound up really harming me and attacking my womb. And it's a a whole thing, but they've taught me so much. And, you know, their intention was to stop whatever it is I'm here to do in not only this lifetime, because I've been able to trace it back to um, hundreds of lifetimes of dealing with this energy, which I think for a lot of us is the same case, like this these entities, it's nothing new. It's something that has maybe been there hidden in the shadows for a while. And in this lifetime, it's just time to finally face it and address it and stop it from continuing to feed off of you. Um, So yeah, everything that I learned was through my own, my own inner exploration. So yeah, thank you to them for shining a light on the shadows. I love that you hold that peaceful, graceful perspective uh, on the darkness and really embracing it as as a teacher force that su- encourages evolution uh, in this universe. I loved your post way back when you shared. Um, so, you know, you scroll through, there is so many beautiful posts, but somehow intuition guides us, okay, I'm going to check this one <laughs> out. And it was a particular story you shared when there is psychic attack and attachment through the womb that you've experienced your womb um, actually growing and it looked like you're pregnant. And I'm so grateful for seeing that because it happened to me too, that when a particular person entered my life within that month, I looked like I'm six months pregnant just suddenly. And it was something, you know, my attention was constantly there, like what's going on here, that something is just not right. And then once I uh, addressed this and realized, okay, this connection goes way back to so many different lifetimes. We had to clear so much um, with this particular person, the womb like went right back to its normal shape. It was actually quite fascinating how the body responded to it. And even though mentally and spiritually, I felt strong, the physical body reaction to the connection, recalling the previous incarnations trauma that was physically experienced, like the body just showed what what happened or how the, um, what is the true essence of the connection. So it was really, really powerful. And I'm so glad that you, that you shared this um, in a practical, digestible um, post on your Instagram where people can really learn so much. There's so much free content on your page. So thank you so much for your service. Yeah, but that's Corvus Algorab. I believe that's such a strong connection. I, I'm yet to meet someone who has conjunction to to the star who is not actually in a role of um, a shadow eater or shadow worker or helping others to face the shadow and embrace the darkness in order to become greater light, um, kind of remember our capacity for holding light. Another powerful connection that I want to mention in your chart is your Jupiter in Libra in the ninth house, conjunct super galactic center. Um, and uh, I have started noticing this with with light workers, star seeds who are reaching greater and greater audience where we're speaking in thousands of viewers and followers 
they would often have Jupiter conjunct supergalactic center. I'm starting to notice that too. And yours is in the ninth house, so higher teachings. Beautiful, beautiful work here. Really awesome. And you have also some Lyran connections. Beta Centauri Hadar is conjunct your Pluto, Scorpio 11th house. And I want to ask you, have you had experience of the kind of twin flame uh, relationships or really uh, kind of painful experience with love? Or have you somehow been witnessing that through others? Like, has that been part of your journey at some point too? A big part of it. I I had a very odd, interesting experience with the twin flame. It was like distorted information. It, um, yeah, it was a, a very odd thing, but I don't connect with it. I never, I always got the message in this life that my twin flame is not here. This is not my path. I'm, I will wind up with, a, you know, more of a soulmate type where actually multiple other readers have said, you know, you you can kind of do this on your own. You're just taking someone along for the ride. But in my younger years, aka like still kind of in it, very traumatic, very karmic, very not so lucky in love, but needing it and desiring it to the point where it would consume me. And then it just being a little bit of a mess and you know I I haven't been in a relationship longer than three years so it 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 was yes a, a trauma absolutely and I've been on my own now I mean I've been single between you know but really now that this my most recent relationship has ended where I feel like I've let go of a lot of that old patterning through the transition through the underworld, but I have yet to enter into something new. So I can't say it's fully gone, but yes, the, and also I, I feel like I, a lot of the people that humans, humanoids that I knew during um, my time on Beta Centauri are in my life now and they're very close connections like my best friend and my uh, most recent partner we all have those same three uh, same connections in Pluto Uranus and Neptune which is interesting and a lot of clients with that Beta Centauri energy where we're working on yeah working through that trauma and it's so funny because last night I'm doing this series as we clear black magic and it was focused on love and romance and there was a lot of that energy that was coming through as well so just funny the connection amazing i just love 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 how we can get greater clarity as a result of paying attention to stars and deeper space object yay this is so exciting and i'm sure much more beautiful work will be born through your womb of creativity. Uh, thank you again for shining the light. In closing, is there any message that you may have been maybe received for the audience today as you were reflecting before this podcast? Is there anything you would like to share in terms of 2024, where we are heading? So back when I was connecting with the Pleiadians back in 2018, and they opened up for so many other different soul groups to connect with me. And during that time, I would say like 2021, I started to take count of the humanoid history from the moment that it began in this galaxy till now and how everything unfolded. Um, and I feel that a lot of that knowledge is really going to start to come to light this year. Um, and that's one thing that I love about my galactic astrology reports is with that foundation that I've developed over, I would say it was about a year and a half. And I had actually written a book on it, but I no longer offer it. It's It served its time. And I think all that information will channel now through the podcast and through the readings. But understanding like how as a whole, like our evolution from the moment we've entered this galaxy till now, I feel like all of that is going to start to come to light on a more collective level and a lot of misinformation and those that are actually trying to continue to divert us away from the truth. A lot of that is also going to come to light. Um, I was 
channeling some predictions for 2024 back in the new year. And they were also explaining how because of this, everyone's going to be a lot more opinionated and very vocal about their opinions and how for a lot of us were using our voices almost for the first times and we're learning how to do that. So sometimes it's not always going to come out in the way that we like. So just to as this information comes out in whatever, whichever way it does for you and just being the observer and being gentle with yourself as we move through this next year, because I just feel like there's going to be illumination in ways that might be tough for us to accept at first, but will be so rewarding and liberating once we're able to digest it. Beautiful. Such a timely message. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. And um, are those channeling still available somewhere on the Instagram when people scroll through back through around the new year? If they would like yeah, to. Yeah, it, it does say like 2024 themes for the collective. You should, and I'm holding a leaf, so it should be easy to spot. <laughs> Perfect. Well, I hope all the viewers um, enjoyed this uh, podcast and learning about you, your journey, and the amazing offerings uh, that you have available. I wish you the most amazing path with the Quantum Soul Guidance a journey as a practitioner and um, with your new podcast and everything else that you plan and may yet receive as a gift, as a surprise, as a blessing from the universe. Thank you for being such a beautiful presence of light and love, Lauren. And uh, thank you all for watching and see you again soon. Much love. Take care.